When you buy something, you are participating in a massive social computer. That's right, modern economists envision markets as a type of information processor. In this view, when you do something as simple as purchase gas from the gas station, you are but one small input in a huge social computer. And this social computer helps organize production in our economy through the price mechanism. Modern economists assert that this information processor is smarter than humans. There are many examples of this, but the most prominent is the efficient markets hypothesis. Efficient markets states that asset prices always reflect all available information and that it is exceptionally difficult to beat the average return of the market. This viewpoint privileges the epistemic capacities and activities of the market over that of individual people or small groups of people. This has policy ramifications. One of the greatest threats to life on Earth currently is climate change, and a very common refrain for how that will be solved is market solutions, either in forms of carbon trading schemes or firms like Tesla. To understand why markets are not always going to arrive at the truth, we must first examine some market structures. To borrow a term from Philip Morawski, I shall call this an ecology of markets. First, let us consider a gas station and a grocery store, which are examples of a posted price market. Buyers either accept or reject the price stated. There is no option to haggle or negotiate. Posted price markets are the most simple market structure. They are also the most prevalent in everyday human experience. It is important to keep the activity of the posted price market, the accept or reject feature, in mind because it will be recurrent through the next market structures we examine. The next structure is the open bid market. This structure should be familiar to anybody who likes to order obscure random stuff like out of print books. The most noted in 2021 would probably be eBay. Buyers compete with their money through bids and whoever has the highest bid at the end of the auction wins. There is also an option called buy it now for some items which simulates the activity of the posted price markets. Finally, we have the double auction market structure. Stock exchanges, futures markets, and the electrical grid pricing market are all examples of double auction markets. In a double auction market, buyers and sellers submit price quotes to a central market institution which matches buyers and sellers. Most people use the stock exchange as if it were a posted price market by regularly investing set amounts of money into index funds or ETFs. Because a double auction has to coordinate the buying and selling of multiple commodities between multiple buyers and sellers, there is more computation going on and it is therefore more complex when compared with the posted price or the open bid market structure. Now that our brief ecology is finished, we shall turn to the theory. The following Rumsfeld quote is a brief typology of knowledge. But there are also unknown unknowns, the ones we don't know we don't know. Rumsfeld neglects the unknown known, that which you don't know that you know. For neoliberals, the market knows these things to which we do not have epistemic access. But what does this have to do with knowledge and information? Economists such as Friedrich Hayek argue that prices are a mechanism that the market uses to allocate information and resources. The market, in this view, knows more than people because it takes society's economic activity as an input and incentivizes firms to behave in ways that could not be planned centrally. Responding to consumer demand with the creation of new products, the market is computing information and delivering an output. 
Proponents of this view would argue that everything from the automobile to smartphones are the result of this decentralized competitive process. This view neglects the role that government-funded research can often play in the creation of these technologies. For example, the first touchscreen was developed at the Royal Radar Establishment in the United Kingdom during the 1960s. And the first example of a state funding computational research was, again, the British government with Charles Babbage in the 1800s. But beyond those empirical objections, there are also theoretical objections. I don't think you should accept the Hayekian view, and I'm going to tell you why. We may contrast this Hayekian view of markets with a more modern view that accepts the information processor and computational metaphor and takes it to its logical conclusion. For this, we turn to the work of Philip Murawski and Edward Nick Kahn. First, in 2002, Philip Murawski publishes a book called Machine Dreams. This is a history and philosophy book with economics as its focus subject. One subplot in machine dreams is the development of automata theory in computer science. Automata are theoretical computational machines that help computer scientists research computer programs. The Chomsky language hierarchy helps relate the relative power of automata to one another. The more complicated computers can simulate the activity of the simple computers. The attentive viewer will note the similarity between automata theory and market structure. Just as the more powerful computers may simulate the activity of simple computers, say, by a running a virtual machine, double auction simulates the activity of the posted price when someone purchases an asset for the listed price and does not submit a bid quote. In the last chapter of Machine Dreams, Murawski formally maps two different market structures, a sealed bid and a double auction market, to two different automata models from computer science. As we have seen with the market ecology in part one, there are a diversity of market structures. In 2017, Philip Murawski and Edward Nick Kahn publish a book called The Knowledge We Have Lost in Information, which argues that because of the diversity of market structures, there is no reason to believe prima facie that the market would arrive at the truth all of the time, as Hayek and other neoliberals would want you to believe. If we cannot depend on markets to reliably arrive at the truth, we as humans must use our critical faculties to examine and interpret information. This empowers the subject's epistemic capacities, whereas neoliberalism degrades them. By this I mean neoliberalism tells people that their ability to think is inherently worse than the output which the market gives. Murawski invokes this during the Life and Debt Conference. Let me put it this way. For neoliberals, income is always going to be unequal. And the more unequal, the better. Because that just gives people more incentive to struggle and try to climb the greasy pole and all the rest. Inequality is a necessary side effect of capitalism to these people. Well, if it's true for income, it's true for knowledge, too. Chew on that. <laughs> to put it bluntly, here Murawski is saying neoliberals think people are stupid. The role of the market is to arrive at truth for us because we are cast as incapable of thinking. And the role of the state is the creation of new markets, the enforcement of obedience to those markets, and to preserve their functioning. But as we have seen in the market ecology, markets cannot arrive at the truth all of the time because there are different types of markets. So this entails different types of truth. When I say the Murawskian view of markets privileges human epistemic capacity, this is what I mean. If there are relative types of truth, then people have to critically think and assess information for themselves to determine what they think about it. They can't just rely on the market to tell them. This view forces the subject to reckon with their relationship to markets, economics, and politics. 
It empowers the human to think, observe, and learn. Whereas with neoliberalism, the market tells you what you need to know, but you wouldn't know without this market interaction. What do you think about the role of knowledge in economics? Do you find yourself more in agreement with Hayek or Murawski? Let me know in the comments. Also, please share this video with anyone who has ever told you that everything is priced in. <laughs>